So we have a real treat for you now. Uh, one of my good friends and the executive vice president uh, of InTouch Health and also the general manager of the international business of InTouch Health, who has been a real pioneer of the audio, right? Internet of Things in the medical industry. Michael Chan is, is here with us today. So very excited to show you some amazing things. Michael, uh, Michael and I actually worked together at a company called Computer Motion, which pioneered the whole concept of minimally invasive surgery via robots. So he has just so many years of experience in transforming the healthcare industry. The Internet of Things is really transforming healthcare. In Touch is really at the vanguard of that transformation. It's a very exciting thing. You're going to be blown away by this IoT demonstration. So welcome, Michael. Great. To, uh, thank you, Icon. Gene. Thank you for the introduction. And it's great to see you. And thank you to everyone for the opportunity to tell you a little bit about how the Internet of Things is impacting oh, yeah. in a very huge societal benefit on the healthcare front. Let me first frame the, the, the challenges for you. When I flew up from Southern California this morning, I, I picked up a, a copy of the USA Today, and in the science and health section was this article that the miracles of modern medicine continue to drive uh, life exp expectancy further and further upward. And the, and the quality of life and care that we all aspire to have continues to mature. The challenge here with this aging population demographic, which is global, is, as you can see in, the, in this center chart here, physician specialization is continuing to grow. They're coming into more subspecialties, and it's getting harder and harder to figure out who do you go see for the points of care that you require. Similarly, from 1980 to 2020, you can see on a, on a, a, a basis here of, popu patient, of total population, the number of doctors enrolling in medical school and graduating is on a decline. So the, the healthcare imperative of delivering higher quality care, greater access at lower cost, you have hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars every year going into big data, cloud infrastructure, electronic healthcare information, information exchange, and it was one of the platforms of Obamacare. The challenge remains, a doctor can only see so many patients at one time, the question really becomes, are they seeing the right, the right patients or are you matching up the right specialists to the doctors, to, to the patients at hand? The thing that we're proffering to do here is to, is to be able to bring physicians who are largely pocketed in the major metropolitan areas, the major academic medical centers and the regional centers of excellence to the broader patient population. The concept that we have is called remote presence, acute care telemedicine. A physician can be seated either at a workstation, a laptop, or mobile with an iPad, for example, and soon on Androids. And you can see here that they can bridge themselves over a cloud infrastructure onto an avatar. And we're going to show you that in a minute. In this case, they're on a, a mobile robotic platform, and this platform using a secure HIPAA privacy compliant infrastructure passes two-way audio, real-time uh, video, medical images, and data across a disparate healthcare system. Today, here's a, here's a little bit of a heat map of our installations in the United States. We have over a thousand hospitals in 20 countries using our solutions to 
provide better access to specialists in a timely fashion to provide better outcomes in care at lower costs. That's incredible. In fact, my, uh, my mother happens to be at Kaiser in Fremont and my brother just visit, visited her on a, on a robot like this. It's just incredible. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> what do you think about us going to visit some places? You know, I think we should try to cure some patients. <laughs> Absolutely. So using my laptop, oh, there's a picture of myself and my wife. I've, I've opened an app and I had already logged in with three mouse clicks and I'm transformed and transported into our Clinical Innovation Center in Santa Barbara, California. You can see I'm just playing a little video clip or logged into it. You'll notice on this lower right hand panel, I'm using a common internet line here at Tycon. I'm able to get this connection with about 250 kilobits of download and only about 200 kilobits upload. And it wasn't that long ago, Gene, when you and I worked together and it was like 56-bit modem <laughs> with... Those were the oh battle days. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know? so, let me show you what it looks like if I were to ambulate this unit. So it's ambulating on its own to the mirror. So it's autonomous. Yes. It just goes yeah. by itself. It's incredible. I, I'm reflecting myself into a mirror here. Ah, now check that out. What do you think? There is Michael, hundreds of miles away. Unbelievable. And, and again, you can see the, the ping time to our, Cal our Southern California office is round trip about 100, uh, about 100 milliseconds here. So if you can see if I put my hand up, there's a slight delay, but it's actually synced with a lip sync on the other side. So a patient, a translator can all uh, achieve the job that they need to do. Now, not everything is electronic records, so I'm just showing you that I have the ability to look at paper records. Let's, wow. go, let's go take a closer look at a couple of spots in our center here. It's South That's incredible. It's like iRobot. iRobot is our partner. They ah. developed the robotic base and InTouch Health developed the remote presence telemedicine upper torso. So we are coupled together in, in this partnership. That's awesome. You can see at the foot of the bed here, I have a, a capability, I'm just using my mouse here, give you a quick demonstration, where I can get in very tight and do things like a pupillary exam. That patient looks dead. <laughs> Or I can. Uh, I don't think uh, we're going to help her out. Look at, you know, not, again, not everything is digitized. So perhaps a patient presents at 2 a.m. in the morning with that big yellow envelope, and the doctor remotely just says, "Hey, put it up to the light box." Or not everything is yet vital signs, real time at the bedside, where they can get it off of an iPhone. So this gives it the visualization capabilities. I thought a moment ago I saw somebody. Uh, over at bed three. Why don't we head on over there? So you just specify what bed you want to go to and the robot will just take itself there. Yeah, I, I, you know, a lot of the times the doctors that are moving, in, especially in, in clinical environments they're not familiar with, like a hospital 50 or 100 miles out, yeah. uh, this can be a great tool because they don't need to know the clinical environment that they're not familiar with, or maybe even perhaps with the staff. Hey, it looks like this is Dr. Michael Foster. Hi, Dr. Foster. Dr. Chan, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well, um, but I'll tell you, we have a special patient here. I'm gonna lean closer and whisper. I think he's a real superhero. Uh-oh. Really? Unlikely. I think it's the real 
I think oh, it's the real that, Iron Man. Is that Tony Stark? Is that who that is? It's Tony Stark, Hello? Mr. Chan, Dr. Chan. Wow. Let me let me take a look at a look couple so well. of things. Hang on one sec. Sure, sure. Thank you, Dr. I'm gonna, Chan. Uh, pull up our our applications here. Dr. Foster, what do you think <laughs> the the diagnosis and prognosis is for this patient? Dr. Chan, you know, I just don't know what is wrong with Dr. with Tony Stark's arc reactor. It's not my area of expertise. You know, I, I I'm trying know. to get in a, a little closer to look at it. Can we move in closer? Absolutely. Yeah, if you could pull in a little bit closer, I'll help you with that. Get a little bit closer to see. Yeah, I, I still can't quite see the anatomy that I want. Okay, there, there. You know, it looks like there's some, some blockage there. You know, I think what you've got to do is you've got to use the E-beam and shock this guy's heart. That'll work. Okay, I'm are sure. you sure? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gene? Yeah. Do you confirm? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Gene okay, says that's, that's what we ought to do here. Yeah, he's Iron Man. Okay. He take it. I'm going to need a perfect vacuum and a dimensional now bombometer. Uh, you know, I, I think you should apply it at full force and as fast as you can. Okay, I'm going to go very fast. Here we go. It, it's starting to light up. There it goes. <laughs> hey, 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 I think we have something here, Dr. Chan. You do? Oh hey, my the, goodness! The arc reactor just lit up. He's looking better already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fantastic. Wow, Gene, do you want to uh, say hi to him here? Huh? Hey, Tony, how you feeling, man? Where am I? <laughs> Where? Where are we? I think Santa Barbara, uh, California Michael brought Center. you back from the dead here. That's right. I think we're oh. very successful. Yeah. Great to see you. You're looking really good. Your arc reactor's back on. Looking bright and yeah. strong. I feel like I can fly. You had quite a bit of trauma here, too, I could see on, if I look on these records here. I think they, uh, they put in pedicle screws for fracture fixation. So I think you get the idea yeah. of how this works. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this back to, to dock it at this point. And uh, I'll, I'll show how everyone how the docking works here. Thank you, Dr. Thank Foster. Thank you for your assistance, Dr. Chan. Thank you so much, doctor. All right, what do you guys think? That is an Internet of Things device like no other. Connected device automatically navigates back, leaps tall buildings in single bounds. And now what is it doing, Michael? So it's, it's docking itself because one of the things that we found when we first started this business yeah. was that the uh, uh, people would leave them unplugged. Yes. Right? Like just in video conferencing when you try to connect. Right. And it doesn't. It's either offline or it runs out of battery. Right, right. So uh, is, is uh, this RP Vita product just for doctors? Well, that's our focus here is on the acute care space. Mm -hmm. In healthcare, all the funding in, in, in our minds are driven top down from the hospital systems. So right here in the Bay Area, whether it's Good Sam's in San Jose or Stanford, they're, what, they're the ones driving the regional health strategies, and that's where the icon of dollars are spent. I see, but I, I seem to remember that it's been used to, for, for other purposes and yeah, you know, yeah. people from who have, soldiers who have been deployed? Yes, have, it has. And one, you know, we, don't, uh, we don't have time to demonstrate that, but we have networks that are set up into Iraq where the top trauma and critical care doctors in the DOD are triaging patients directly in the battlefield, uh, in the launch stool, and then back to the United States here. That's incredible. Yeah. You know, the only thing is it, it's really too bad that we can't see Iron Man in person. You know, I, I guess he's just recovered from some horrendous battle, though. So that's yeah, pretty, you know, I wish unlikely. he could just fly yeah. up here now that we've repaired him. I mean, him. you know, the guy's got 
a full charge now. Yeah. Well, Gene, thank you so much for the opportunity to share what we're doing in using the power of the internet to drive a, con okay, a huge societal contribution okay. in healthcare. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Michael.